Today here at PSE, we received our one bazillionth call from a person about a Scott number 596. <laughs> this is the one cent Franklin stamp printed perf 11 by Rotary Press. For those who are unaware, if you find one of these, you can buy a house. Admittedly, not a big house, but a nice cozy house and maybe a not so great neighborhood. But it won't be in the worst neighborhood and maybe just in an expensive state. If you find a mint one, you are looking at prime real estate. So briefly, there are two issues that people call us about. The first is number 594, which is also a one cent Franklin stamp printed rotary press as well. This is a variety of coil waste, but unlike 579, it had not previously been perforated. Let's talk about coil waste. Coil waste was a plan devised by the Bureau of Printing just after World War I in 1919 to use some of, the un, some of the scrap postage that was left over from making coil stamps. This scrap was, existed because the plates that they were using on rotary press, which were 170 uh, uh, stamps per pane, you, there was always something left over because you couldn't make coil rolls of 500 stamps. So this stuff was being actually thrown away. So the Bureau came up with a way to take these stamps and perforate them with the current Perf 11 pen and distribute them. So they're, uh, they're distinctly different than the flat press stamps, which is what they're normally confused as. Today, many collectors fail to recognize this variety as the Perf 11 perforations are the same as the flat plate issue, with the only difference being that the width is a fingernail thickness wider. This is because these stamps were printed from printing roller plates, like you see in the newspaper montages in old movies, versus the flat plate printing presses you see in the Revolutionary War recreations. Well, let's talk about rotary press now. Um, rotary press sheets, rotary press plates, um, after they've been certified, they still have not been hardened, require additional machining. They are actually curved to fit the press cylinder yeah, so the plate actually has thickness. It's a thicker piece of metal. So if you imagine as you bend the plate into a cylinder, the outside will actually be stretched a little bit. So that's what makes rotary press stamps slightly bigger in whichever direction they are stretching the plate. And that's this additional size. And again, we're dealing with a distance like the thickness of your fingernail. And actually, we don't even measure it. We have a little template we use on the precision gauge. And you line the stamp up on the precision gauge, and it will show you because trying to measure... And I see people who uh, send us pictures, Yeah, and they'll put it next to like a ruler. It's like a grade school ruler, too. Yeah, it's like, it's like a wooden <laughs> metal, ruler. Metal-edged wood ruler. Yeah. <laughs> And the thickness that you're looking to differentiate is like half the size of the line on the ruler that you're trying to read. So now to the 596. The big one. 596 is a slightly taller design than both the flat plate printing and the rotary coil waste printing 594 stamp due to the direction it was rolled around the rotary press cylinder. 594 is approximately 22 and a quarter millimeters tall, while this stamp is 22 and a half. Just a note, the difference in size is about the thickness of your fingernail. Again, I've never measured my fingernail, so I don't know. Eight of the 596 stamps have Kansas City pre-cancels, and there are no mint copies known. Does that mean eight of the known 596s? Have Kansas City pre Eight of the authenticated ones. Ah. Um, well, let, let's go over it here. Let's do this. What are some things that a person who has a one-cent Franklin stamp, they don't even know what perf 11 means. 
what are some things that they can look at that stamp and say, is this a house or is it a nickel? A stamp has any kind of offset. It, yeah. it, it, it's a flat press stamp. So, so it turn it over first. So turn it over. Yeah. Um, and on the flat plate printing, the paper is stacked right after it gets printed. So often you get some of the ink from the stamp below to hit the back of the stamp above. Right. That's called offset or set off, depending on what, depending right. on what term you'd like to use. So if you're looking for a 596 or a 594, you should not see any of that. That's correct. If you see, oh, and I've had uh, conversations with people where I say, look at the back. Do you see any green ink? And they say, oh, just a little spot. And you go, well, that's that's all you need to see to know well, that you haven't got the right one. What about the uh, stamp color as, as uh, 594, 596? Are they a distinctive color? They're, the they're, they're a little darker. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, since they're coil waste, they're closer to that. This is, it's, that coil, it's that coil color, which is a darker green color. Well, how about this? It's never the yellow-green cover. Correct. It's never that cover. Color. A, a gentleman who collects, I understand that a gentleman who um, went through 6,000 stamps and had, he's a dealer and he had, he had a holding of, of the one centers, uh, all used, went through it and found one, one he said he went through 6,000 stamps. So I have to think that, uh, yes, he was well paid in one, one, one sense, <laughs> but if you look at 6,000 stamps, even using the, uh, the template method, you are still spending hours and hours and hours yeah not to mention the uh, googly eye effect well <laughs> also six thousand stamps the odds of finding one in six thousand stamps is still incredibly small it's not like well i'll get six thousand and probably find one it's like no you get six thousand you have zero chance he just happened to be lucky um i i also think that 99 out of 100 people in the trade now um, are absolutely honest about something like that. So if you bring something into somebody who's who's a stamp store or a, or goes you go to a trade show, which we aren't having right now because of the COVID virus, um, that most people will tell you the truth about: Do you have something real or do you have something fake? Well, the th the cool thing about this is, if you think that the dealer is ripping you off. And you walk out with the stamp with him giving you absolutely no offer on the stamp. Then he's probably not ripping you off. You probably honestly do not have a valuable stamp. Because the alternative for this quarter million dollar stamp is that it's a two cent stamp or a one cent stamp or a valueless stamp. So you're talking literally pennies that nobody is going to try to rip you off for. Till next time, we need your help. Nothing on the internet is free, including our phone and internet connections. You can support the podcast by joining the Stamp Show Here Today Club. The cost is $10 for a lifetime membership. Please include your APS member number if you are an APS member, as we are an affiliated club. Your support is greatly appreciated. Our address is P.O. Box 539-309, Henderson, Nevada, 89053. You have been listening to Stamp Show here today, seeking to advance all levels of the stamp collecting hobby through news, information, and collecting advice. Visit us at stampshowheretoday.com to listen to the show, view images of the items we are talking about, and read the show notes. You can also continue the conversation on Facebook at Stamp Show Here Today and on Twitter at Stamp Show HT. If you have questions or comments about the show or have any topics you would like us to discuss, you can email us at Stamp Show Here Today at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and as always, keep collecting. Collecting happens when we dream together.